thanks Andrew. So um, yeah, did I just hear that Roxanne's buying everyone coffees upstairs later? Um, I'll be there. Um, and another thing from the poll, obviously everyone's interested in 4G, so I'll give you guys an update on where we're at. Um, as you no doubt know, we're in the process now of building that network and ready to launch it um, around October this year. Um, what you probably don't know is that um, the, the rollout of our 4G network is um, going to be hitting a large part of Auckland around that time, but we're going to be building probably to all the major cities by the middle of next year. So we'll have a lot of coverage throughout New Zealand um, by the middle of next year in all the major towns and cities. And then when we uh, work with the government around the digital dividend, we'll start to roll that out to rural areas very quickly. So we're aiming to have a very quick deployment of 4G, get it out to as many customers as possible as soon as possible. Um, another thing we've to understand is we've already got a uh, 42 megabits per second network out to more than 50% coverage of our customers. So you can already get very high speeds on the smartphone network and take advantage of some of the things that have been shown today in terms of applications and services and no need to wait for the 4G stuff and there's a lot more devices that are uh, enabled with that technology today that can go out and take advantage of it. So don't need to wait for those things to come to start exploring the types of things you can do with a fast mobile network because it's out there already. Um, big part of the rollout um, of our network in the future is not just about the mobile network. Um, we've talked today about Wi-Fi. You saw from the SAP guys about uh, some of the applications that you can start to leverage when you've got a large Wi-Fi footprint. So as part of our uh, network rollout, we're building what's called a heterogeneous network, which means that we're going to combine 4G, 3G and Wi-Fi into a single experience for our customers. So when you're out and about and you're on your phone, if you're a telecom customer, you'll be able to, to roam onto our Wi-Fi network um, throughout the country and there'll be almost 2,000 access points um, throughout the country in the next 12 months on that network, growing um, again over the next five years to, to get a very substantial Wi-Fi footprint. And that's good for you guys for a number of reasons. We can start to do cool things um, about very close proximity in terms of location and it lowers your overall data charges, gets a more ubiquitous performance and speed out there. There are limitations with wireless networks so this heterogeneous network approach means that we can offer a very consistent experience um, with very good speeds at very low prices across the country. So that's, that's a key point of the strategy of our network rollout, is that you'll hear a lot about Wi-Fi with mobile ne networks. Backing um, all of that up are investments we're making in the core network. It's really important to understand that a 4G network is not just about the, the fancy speeds in the air, and I'll talk a little bit about those fancy speeds in a minute, but um, behind that has to sit a very robust um, transport network and telecoms making massive investments in an optical transport network that will be able to carry multiple 100 gigabit um, streams of data across our network. So you get that very fast performance in the ear, but when it hits a base station, if you haven't got something chunky behind that, then your performance is then uh, restricted. So with that optical transport network, we'll be able to provide a very good end-to-end -end experience across the network. And that's important because from day one, we'll have uh, very fast, kind of 100 megabits per second um, across the mobile network per user is the kind of theoretical maximum, but uh, average speeds approaching near that for most users. Um, very early in the next year, um, we will enable a thing called Category 4 LTE, which means you can get up to 150 megabits per second, and our technology partner is um, you know, quite a way ahead of the other uh, providers in the marketplace in New Zealand in terms of delivering that technology, both from a handset perspective and from a, um, from a network perspective. And then very shortly after that, we'll start doing a thing called carrier aggregation, which is taking multiple um, radio frequencies, joining them together to give you even faster speeds. So category four is 150 megabits per second, category, uh, sorry, advanced LTE starts with carry aggregation starts to be about 300 megabits per second. And you can start to think of the types of things that you can do in a, in, a, in a bandwidth environment where you've got 300 megabits per second to every mobile device. Very cool stuff. This, the, the lab tests at the moment that we've seen um, uh, recently are a gigabit per second. 
and those are on devices which are probably the size of that lectern, um, but they'll come down very shortly. Only a few years ago, a standard LTE device was bigger than that. So um, in the very near future, you're gonna be able to get to the point of a gigabit per second <coughs> performance across the mobile network. So lots of cool things happening in that space. Another thing you've heard a lot about rural broadband. Um, one thing that you will hear a lot about is Vodafone talked in that context because they won the um, part of the contract uh, that is responsible for rolling out the towers um, and putting up the um, base stations around rural broadband. Telecom's made a commitment that everywhere telecom doesn't have coverage and there is an RBI site available, we will put coverage on that site so that um, we'll be able to provide un unmatched coverage as we do today. So past that, um, I think we talked today with the theme around the next big thing in mobility, and I think the thing that I'd encourage you to look at is it's actually here today. This isn't stuff that we're talking about that's 10 years in the future or five years in the future. These are all things that are realities that you can enable today. The stuff that SAP guys took you through are real applications that real customers are using. The things that Samsung talked to are things that are actually happening today. This isn't pie in the sky. This is stuff we can actually enable you um, to take advantage of today. And I'll show you um, how we can put that stuff together in a second. But I really encourage you to not look at this as something that's way out there and see it as something that's here now and something that you can take advantage of today. Um, we've heard today about um, these big major shifts in technology and we've talked to you guys about the four forces and Gartner and those IDC you will call it the Nexus or the third platform, Sam, Samsung talked about it today as well um, in, in terms of the big things that are shaping the way technology is working. And what you'll start to see us more and more work with you guys around is how we can bring these things together. And the partnership with SAP um, is a really key point of that. The uh, acquisition of uh, Rivera is a really key point of that because we want to be really strong in helping enable businesses to take advantage of these four forces converging and coming together to create new opportunities to give new experience to your customers or to change your business processes to deliver value inside your organisations. And there are real business benefits here. These aren't pie in the sky things again. These are real things, tangible things that we can do. Think, I hope you've seen today that how we can help you engage your customers more or de deliver differentiated service experiences or reduce your costs or create new opportunities or new business models. These are real things that we can do today with you, both for your, yourselves inside your enterprise, enabling your staff, or for you to your customers and going out there and trying new things with them. And what I think it is, all this coming together, is leading to this new kind of convergence. In the past we've talked about the convergence of IP networks and voice networks and data networks and SIP trunking and all those and video and all those kind of things. But I think the emerging um, convergence is something that's been bandied around about um, called the share economy. And so you'll see it today. We've actually um, worked with our fiercest competitors to create an ecosystem that allows us to share assets, to share information, to share technology, to deliver outcomes that are growing an ecosystem. And that's the new kind of conversion. That's the kind of thing we want to enable for you guys. It's taking a different approach to your business processes and to your information architecture and your systems to allow you to be more open inside your organisation, to allow you to be more open with your customers, to be more open with your partners and to be more open even with your competition to create better value for everyone. That's the kind of thing we want to encourage. McKinsey say that um, business who take advantage of this share economy um, can add about 12% to the productivity of their organisations by doing that. And some really cool and simple um, examples of those kinds of things that have been shown today, even with the, the pothole logging app. That, that, that application is um, the, the organisation within the council sharing and opening access to its uh, public to enable better outcomes for both the public and for the council. They're reducing their cost to serve. Um, their users, they're providing a better user experience and the user feels empowered and engaged. That's an example of how the share economy works and that's what we want to focus on with organisations that we deal with, is how can we enable that experience inside your business. And what that requires, and here's the plug, um, hope you enjoyed your breakfasts, um, 
is to work with a next-gen service provider. And we've looked at and talked to lots of analysts and kind of understood what would it take for us as an organisation if we want to help you get to the point where you're taking advantage of the share economy. How can we be um, set up to provide those benefits to you? And you would have seen a lot of big changes in our um, structure and in the way that we're behaving in the market, things like the Rivera acquisition, because we're really serious about this. Um, and so what it starts with is having that core network stuff. You can't get away from it. You've got to transport bits across the network somehow. What we want to do that um, for you guys in, is in the most reliable, lowest cost per bit, and um, fastest way possible, so you're unconstrained in that perspective. So we're making those investments in 4G, in Wi-Fi, in optical transport, and looking at how we can open up APIs within the network to create better customer experiences. So those applications that we showed you before um, are able to be enriched by information we can get about who our customers are, where they've been recently, you know, not just that they walked around the supermarket, but where did they come from before they got to the supermarket? Whose other shops have they visited before that? Those kinds of information. Um, that relies heavily on having cloud platforms because you've got massive amounts of data and you've got um, that uh, freedom to innovate requires having agility in the platforms that sit behind it. That means that you can come on board, try something, that doesn't quite work, we can try something else, can innovate quickly together. So the uh, uh, re acquisition of Rivera to enhance our cloud computing capability has been really important to that. The uh, partnership with SAP, who we think are the world leaders in enabling mobile applications through their platforms, and not just for SAP customers, by the way. It's a really important point to understand, um, so that we can enable quick innovation in that cloud context. Um, the next part that's really important is, and as Samsung guys talked to about, this is actually complex. You know, this, the experience you want to deliver to your customers has to be really simple. That's what they expect. Tap and go uh, is a very simple experience for them. There's shoot loads of complexity behind that. And so you've got to have the right skills to manage that complexity. Um, and we really want to invest in that and keep investing in that. And the last part of it is, really getting inside and understand your business. And that's where our sales teams come in and work with you, go through our PSI programs, go through our Pathway to Cloud programs to help you understand how you can change your business processes in a mobility context and enable your organization to take advantage of the things that we've talked to you about today.